Hi, this is the documentation or video documentation for Procedural NPC Crowds V2 update. So with this update, we have a couple new features. Um, one of them is the ability to send events to pawns, so right here. This would be like a conversation. This is just an animation from the jump that I used. Um, but whenever they're done, they will procedurally walk away and continue the path, but others can join in. So that's one example. I'm just playing an animation, um, but you can do whatever event you want. And then he'll walk away. Some new ones will come up. And so that can add dynamics to your world. Um, a lot of times in big games, the open worlds, they'll have people talking or converging and doing things. So that's what that could be used for. Um, and then there has been improved pathfinding for the AI. Uh, they don't get stuck anymore. Sometimes in the past, if they would like look directly at this and there's no other path point, they would get stuck. That does not happen anymore. They will refine themselves. Okay, and then um, that is the the noticeable improvements in the gameplay. But there's a couple other nodes that got changed. So one of the um, so before you had this node and this node, and those were used on this behavior tree. So this one would uh, find a new path point. However, it would look behind them. So sometimes the AI would turn around. So a new node has been made called Find Path Point Forward. And what you can do is you can uh, set it to be uh, set, set where or how far in front of the player the um, pathfinding will start looking. So if you set this like a negative number, they'll look behind them and they'll always turn around. But I found that 250 is a good 200 to 250 is a good um, amount, and that way they don't get stuck, they don't um, turn around, they're always going forward, but they never get stuck. Uh, the next thing that came into both find path point forward and find next waypoint is this pathfinding separation. Now I'm going to use this pathfinding uh, full board. So um, whenever the whenever you set these values, what they do is they will offset the location. So instead of going directly forward, you could have them, whenever they go to a path point, they can go a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. And this is procedural, so it'll be different every time. It's not directly set. Um, but you could change this to like 500, and they're going to go further to the left or further to the right from the path point. Um, for this, I found 150 works well. The next thing that was added, and this is on find path point forward and find next waypoint, is refine path point radius. This replaces the old wander um, backup behavior where they would just run around in different directions. What this does is it um, checks within a radius of the AI character. It checks within a radius of it, or pawn. And if it, um, if it detects a path point inside that radius, it'll move to one of them. So it's, it's, like, a, it's like a radius version of the forward. Um, and that's used whenever the forward can't find anything, okay? And basically, that is the new stuff for these nodes. Um, the other one is find random path point. This is pretty similar to this refine, but it's its own thing. So in, in an example of when you would use this is in my game, I have characters that could fly around and move around the map really fast. So I would use this, and I would set this to like um, 8200, and they could move to any path point in the map within 8200 radius. And that's in a vector. Um, so that is those two nodes, or those three nodes. And then we have a new one which adds a lot to the game, and that was where they were like using that falling animation. That's this perform action node. So what this does is it sends an event to your uh, pawn, that's the AI is, okay? And you have up to, you should have up to 32 events. I'm gonna fix that, but there will be up to 32 events here. Okay, I probably just need to rebuild the code. Right now it says 10, but there will be 32 in your uh, example. Okay, and then, um, so in this case, I'm using action one and action two. And what action one does, if we go to our pedestrian, the pawn that we're using, the character, uh, we can see that event NPC action one. So if we just type in event NPC, we can see all the actions. Now there should be 32 here in the final product. Um, I need to fix that not showing up but there will be 32 in the final product. But for this example, there's just 10. Um, so we have event action one and event action two. And what this is doing, I'm gonna take this print string out. 
but it's disabling the movement and playing a montage. And now, ideally, in a commercial game, I would be using, like, a instead of a jump montage, I would be using a, uh, like, a conversation animation. So the AI would, like, be having a conversation with each other. And I'd probably play a sound on here, too. Play sound 2D. Or play sound lo location. Um, and so that's what you would do. But this allows you to send data or send events between the behavior tree to the pawn directly. Um, and like I said, right now it says 10, but there's going to be 32 in the actual uh, product that you have. And then we also have the wander from, which hasn't really changed. Uh, what this will do is it will make them move in a random direction. Uh, so, yeah. But that is basically what is new with V2. Uh, lots of expandability and uh, ways to do things, especially with the perform action and the highly requested uh, forward only pathfinding. Uh, you still have the look behind you if you want, but uh, this is the one that a lot of people requested. Thank you for watching. Um, oh, there's one more thing I wanted to show you for the, um, for the, uh, what do you call it? Um, for, oh yeah, for the find next waypoint where the, the object that we want to perform the actions on, those are, that was just a, we go to pedestrian systems folder and we go to triggers. I made this. It's just BP act and trigger. It's an actor with just a box glider in it. That's all that's in there. And on the box glider, I set a collision channel to be destructible. So whenever the behavior tree on this waypoint here finds a destructible, it'll move to it and then it'll perform the action once it's gotten to its location. So um, I hope that helps. Thank you for all these suggestions that uh, the community made on V1. Hopefully this helps with V2. Thank you.